Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at, uh, this is not a Nendoroid. Okay, well, here's the thing. I've had this figure for a month and a half now or two and I absolutely love it. I've been debating on whether or not I should make a video on it. And well, here we are. Uh, before I say anything else, I should note that this is my first amazing Yamaguchi figure ever. I really enjoyed seeing the previous releases from both the Marvel and DC line, but none of them piqued my interest enough to actually invest in them. It wasn't until I saw that they were releasing figures from my favorite anime, My Hero Academia, that I knew I had to pick the figures up. And then when I saw the preview photos, I dropped my Figma and started to cry. Also, side note, uh, don't mind the mess back here, it's not done yet, I am still slowly moving in to a new house. Um, all the other videos you've seen before then have been in my apartment, but this is at my mom's house. So this is a work in progress, just ignore that. Taking a look at the packaging and it really pops. It also kind of hurts my eyes. Every inch of this packaging is taken over by something My Hero related or amazing Yamaguchi related. Even the little card flaps when you open the figure, which you won't see unless you actually buy it, have little uh, My Hero Academia screenshots. It's like the designer took minimalist principles and just threw them in the trash. Screw it! We don't need it. I'm just gonna hire a 14 year old Photoshop illustrator taking commissions to make my product packaging. And hey, guess what? Uh, it's kind of cool. It's cool because they know exactly what this is. It's not some elitist Mezco 112th unboxing. It's a crazy fun toy with unlimited posability. It's just a toy. This is a toy packaging. This is supposed to, to spark the little kid in you. It's supposed to want you to, to grab it off the shelf or in my case, uh, click buy on AmiAmi. So many AmiAmi purchases. Also, to any Mezco fans out there hurt by that elitist comment, um, don't worry, I'm there too. Getting a closer look at the figure itself, and Deku kinda looks like a fuckboy. Don't get me wrong, I think he looks great. Uh, that haircut just looks a little expensive, you know? And in my personal opinion, I think he looks like the ideal manga version of him. I think the way that this character looks is closer to the artist style than the anime. Does that make sense? <laughs> I've noticed that every company making a 112th Deku figure have failed to capture the likeness, and it's really tough. For a while I thought Figma did it the best, but now, comparing the two, Figma um, just doesn't hold up, I think. Even the Bam Presto statues, which are pretty high quality for a cheap price, don't actually get um, the likeness correct. So on a scale from awful to awesome, I think Amazing Yamaguchi sits right about here. Amazing Yamaguchi based this figure off of his season four look specifically, and I think that was a really good idea. He's always growing from season to season and he looks a bit different each season, so I can imagine it's hard to capture that likeness when you're trying to capture the whole entire thing. The rest of the costume looks pretty stunning too. Yamaguchi sensei usually likes to take liberty in exaggerating some character's assets, um, but I feel like he really held back when sculpting and designing this Deku figure. I think this really maintains the younger, teenage look to him. Getting up close and personal in this first faceplate looks ravishingly serious. He looks determined and confident, and I really admire that character development captured in just a single look. His second expression is, uh, not that good. I mean, yeah, it's a nice smile and all, but his eyebrows look a little... thick. I don't know, maybe if he was smiling with his teeth instead of this weird area of pink, I would probably like it a bit more. And finally, Deku has an attacking faceplate. This, this is what dreams are made of. There's just so much power and intensity behind this look. All of these faceplates have eye plates that can pop out and are interchangeable, so it gives for even more unlimited expression and posability. It's kind of crazy. The standard ovular eyes vary from looking left, center, and right. And there's also this dorky, surprised, shocked expression, which really captures the Deku feel. The angry expression can also look from left, center, and right, but it can also look left and up, 
left and down, right and up, and right and down, which is also great for Deku in his season four shoot style. Moving on to his accessories, and amazing Yamaguchi blows me away with the sheer amount of stuff packaged into this box. I'm looking at you, Figma. Uh, come on. That was 2017. That was a different time. I was the only Deku on the market. Out of my way, you damn nerd. What? More than one of you? Two nerds? Starting with Deku's various hands, he comes packaged with fists. Boring, but expected. He then comes with a pair of open action hands. These are super useful and I absolutely love their sculpt. I have these on him most of the time. He then comes with his, um, smash hands. These are interesting to me since he doesn't really do that anymore. I mean, he does later on, but not in this costume. And finally, Deku comes with a pen holding right hand and a notebook holding left hand. And I think it was these accessories that sent me over the top about how much I love this figure. I can feel the love and care that went into this and to this character. And it makes me excited for any future amazing Yamaguchi My Hero releases. The little pen wasn't too frustrating to get into his hand, but I did fear that I would drop the little pen or that it would snap, so just be wary. The Japanese Compost Notebook is just a beautiful little accessory that is faithful to the show and in real life. It looks exactly like the kinds of books that Deku carries around with him. He's a total nerd. And that's why we toy collectors love him so much. He's just us. <laughs> the printing on this thing is wonderful and highly detailed. And if you turn to the actual pages, which could have easily been left blank, you'll see that they added some notes on Kamui Woods, a callback all the way to the first season. It's just so beautiful and thoughtful that it could make a grown man cry. Now, while this captures the inquisitive and calculated nature of young Izuku, it doesn't capture the hero side of him. That's where these come in. He comes with eight large turquoise, one for all, full cowling effects that plug into the various ports all around his body. Based on how they're packaged, I would assume that the parts on the right are for the right side of his body, uh, but I don't think it matters all that much. Just whatever you think looks best, I'd say. He also comes with four smaller interchangeable effect pieces. Two of them are pink instead of turquoise. This can recreate how all the power is building up in one instant, one punch. Nope, that's a different show. One kick man, right? He's one kick man, no. These also could be used for some furious note taking, I guess, he does tend to do that sometimes. So, hey, the world is your oyster with this amazing Yamaguchi. To make this effect a bit more believable, he comes with an interchangeable front hair part, which has some lightning effects built into it. I also think that the hair sculpt is maybe a bit more um, fluffy, I guess. It, it kind of looks like his hair is being lifted up from the electricity, which is how it looks in the show. And I think that really completes the look to these lightning effects. Although. I personally think it's a bit distracting. Don't get me wrong, I'm really glad that they included them, but I think if I were to pose Deku up on a shelf, I would only use a few of these and not all of them. Okay, so the last bit of accessories that he comes with are two display stands. One for the figure and one for these clear plastic effect display pieces. I don't know, onomatopoeia pieces. These are pretty high quality and hold the figure up really well. The other stand is used for his two big smash effect pieces. He comes with a nice bright yellow one that says smash. Cool. And then he comes with a large one that goes smash. To connect these onto the stand, there is a little plastic adapter piece in Deku's main tray box. So you just slide them in there like that and put them on the stand. I think they look pretty cool, but Again, I probably won't use these. What I would use, however, is his third little vinyl effect piece, which is his uh, mumbling effect. And it looks like that a screen cap from the manga or anime was just brought into the real life. And I absolutely adore this thing. Are you still with me? I know it's a long review and it's not very funny. There's just so much to get through. We're almost done. One last thing. The last thing we need to talk about here is his poseability. It's 
insane. Because after all that I've talked about, this nerd has near perfect articulation. I think instead of going through all the nitty gritty, I'll just put some poses of my own up that I would personally display him in. Just because there's so much, and I'm honestly taken back by how much there is. I've never had a figure this articulated. I collect Mezco, which you know, can't pose for shit. Uh, I collect Figma, which look great, but for the most part, can't get super dynamic poses. So this amazing Yamaguchi has really altered the way I look at things. It's just fun. It's just a fun thing to play around with. There's little to no limitations here. So yeah, this figure is almost perfect. And in my mind right now, it's the most perfect. I feel weird saying that, but I really mean it. The pro of having this figure for so long is that I know it pretty well. I will say the only con for me is that after a while of posing him, his legs got a little loose, specifically in his thighs and knees. His arms also got kind of squeaky. They were a little harder to pose. That was pretty weird. I remedied this with some hot water and clear nail polish. Make sure you get the right one, not the one that corrodes plastic, but the one that protects it. So other than that, this figure kicks ass. This review is like two months old at this point, so if you're watching this, you probably already know how beloved this figure is in the community. And if you haven't, then know that I think this Deku is the best one yet. This is the best articulated version of him. I probably won't make a top 10 action figure list simply because I haven't really gotten that many this year, only about six or seven, but know that this Deku here would be number one, without a doubt, no competition. This Deku really has made me rethink all this collection, what I should be collecting, what I should prioritize. And that's the review. I want to thank you so much for watching. I know it was a long one. But it felt good to make, so I hope some of you enjoyed that. Next week, we're getting back into the Nendoroid world with Nendoroid Shinra Kusakabe from Fire Force, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm writing the script right now. I know I said I wouldn't make a top 10 action figure list, but I don't know. Um, I know I said Deku would be number one on the top 10 action figure list, but I recently picked up this Wei Zhang Commander Leader Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie, and it um, is awesome. And it it hits some sort of nostalgia that I didn't have. You know, I didn't grow up with the 80s cartoon, but I grew up with the 2008 Michael Bay Transformers or whenever it came out. So I don't know. He might take this would be difficult. So if you want to see a top 10 list at the end of the year. Um, please let me know. I'd be interested in making that. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like or a comment down below. I love talking to you guys. I'm going to go shave, um, so I'll see you in the next one. Peace.